Hi, Gary Cassie here. Behind me you see a building going up, in fact a couple buildings, and we can see all the components of the building, the foundation, the walls, the ceiling, roofs, all that. One part that you don't see that's probably more essential than any part in most buildings is the debt that it takes to build. In fact, if I walk down any typical housing development today, usually 90 to 95 or higher percent of those homes are financed by debt. The homeowners really do not own them. Well, you say, Gary, that's how it is. Well, what would you say if I told you it doesn't have to be? That the average family we found out can be debt free in five to seven years, including their home mortgage on their current income? That's an amazing statement, isn't it? Well, let's find out how to build your house different today. Let's build it free. Let's build it God's way and live a life of peace on fixing the money thing. I'm Gary Cassie, and for nine years, we lived in a chaotic, stress-filled, visionless life. I cried out to God. He said, I want my people free. America's financial coach, Gary Cassie, shares the kingdom principles that changed his life, defeated his debt, and set him free. You'll never find your destiny until you fix the money thing. Welcome to Fixing the Money Thing. I'm Gary Cassie. I'm Drenda Cassie. You know, Gary, there was a time we didn't believe we could get out of debt either. Uh -uh, no way. We used to buy everything on payments. Yep. And, uh, you know, I think most people are raised with that attitude of if you want something, you're just going to put it on payments. Today, we do not, we don't even think payments, do we? No, we That's not even in our vocabulary to think, no, we don't. oh, it's only going to be $500 a month or $200 a month. You know, Dorinda, let's take a moment and, and catch them up to speed where we really were. Yeah, 25 I mean, years ago, it wasn't too pretty. It wasn't pretty at all. In fact, uh, basically, everything broken, everything used, little farmhouse, every car we had, 200,000 miles, hope that it started. I mean, uh, you remember the broken window frames, the old farmhouse. I mean, it still had the wavy glass. I and mean, this farmhouse hadn't been remodeled mm -hmm. since the 1800s. And no, no heat upstairs. No heat upstairs. But it was a fixer-upper. We drove a used car until it would drive no more. Yeah, and we did yeah. make a commitment. But it seemed like for a while there, the harder we tried to get out of debt, the further we got behind. Right. And right. Uh, it seemed impossible it seemed until impossible. we got a hold of some things that made a difference. Well, it came... Everything got worse and worse and worse till we exhausted every bit of credit. We've already borrowed tens of thousands of dollars <laughs> from relatives, and we were basically hopeless. But we were already Christians. I know you're thinking, well, you need to get, you know, know the mm -hmm. Lord and come to church. But we already were in church. In fact, we were active in church, leading worship in church, and loved God. But yet we were moving backwards, and we have found, Dorinda, that so many Christians have lived yes. just like that. What's the answer? It's found in Luke chapter 6, verse number 20. Blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of God. How we discovered that? Well, let's take a look at a session we recently taught at Faith Life Church where we examine that very question, and you'll find out. An attorney called, one of many that called and said, we're filing a lawsuit against you for one of my clients. This was not out of the ordinary, but on this particular day, there was nothing left. Every credit card, every option, even my dad said he was tired of loaning me money. Everything was closed down. And so when he called, I went upstairs to my bedroom and laid across the bed and cried out to God because I knew I needed help. God spoke to me instantly. I thought that was amazing. I remember thinking it was amazing then in that day. And he simply gave me this scripture, Philippians 4, 19, and my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in Christ Jesus, or it means the kingdom. I said, I don't, I've heard that scripture a million times, but I don't have that. Why not? He answered quickly again. He says, because you've never learned how my kingdom operates. Now, I didn't know what that meant, and that was the first time I heard the term kingdom. What does that mean? I didn't know what that meant. I ran downstairs, grabbed Drenda's hand, said, Drenda, God spoke to me. I apologized to her. We repented. I can remember the exact spot we prayed. We had no idea what we were going to do. This attorney had called. We had nothing but God teach us the kingdom. All right? Well, at the time, for your amazing kind of information, I was teaching people how to work with their finances. Isn't that interesting? I was selling insurance and securities. And so in those days, we all, I was always happy our cars started because to me, I did believe in a God because they started. It was a miracle every day. <laughs> I'm just kidding. 
they were in bad shape. So when on appointment, the next day I had an appointment. On appointments, I had a strategy. I would park my van around the block because let's put yourself in their shoes. You're talking to me about investing a half million dollars. You look out in the driveway and there's this beat up, falling apart, no wheels match van. And when I started, it puffs and smokes and fills your driveway with smoke. Wouldn't you assume if you are so smart in finances telling me how to do it, wouldn't you apply it to your own life? Isn't that a, wouldn't you assume that? So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm smart to figure that out. So I park around the block and I would always walk to the client's house. But this guy followed me out. Remember, this is the day after this thing happened. He followed me. He's a talker. He followed me down the street. I thought, you know, he wouldn't go that far, but he did. And came to the van. And so I decided he'd wear himself out after a while, but he didn't. So I got in the car. I had to be somewhere else. So I got in the car and finally, reluctantly, I started the car. I knew what would happen. And it did. The whole driveway filled with smoke. And he went, shut it off. Shut it off. I said, right. Okay. He comes up to the window and says, I'm a mechanic. Part-time, I'm a mechanic. Let me check your engine. So he popped the hood. He comes back and says, you have a broken head gasket. Just drive it home. Don't drive it, you know, everywhere. Just drive it home. Get it fixed. You'll be fine. That's not really what I wanted to hear because people that have no money, a head gasket's like a major event, right? And so on the way home from that appointment, I began to talk to God because we just had committed ourselves to learn the kingdom. Didn't know what that meant. I said, God, I can't sell this car broken. I can't pay it off. I can't sell it broken. I don't know what to do with this car. Maybe it'd be better if it just burned up and the insurance company pay it off and I'd be rid of it. When I said that, I was driving and I noticed on the hood just a little speck of paint, that bu- just a little bubble. And for some reason, I remember thinking, I don't remember that bubble there before. But the thing that caught my attention was the bubble was getting bigger as I drove. And it eventually got the size of my hand. The paint was bubbled. And I thought, that is definitely not normal. (laughs) As I pulled into my office, as the wheels touched the berm, you know, the the little road as you turn into the driveway of the office, bam, the whole thing burst into flames, six to eight foot high off the engine. Think of all the years of the oil leaking from that head gasket, coating that engine. Now all that oil is inflamed and that fire, that black smoke, just that thing is on fire. Yes! (laughs) Yes! <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I mean, put yourself in my shoes. I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. I said it, and there it's burning up. Can you, can you imagine that? The firehouse was just five houses down the street. So I called them, even though, you know, I didn't really want to put it out too soon. They come down there, of course, by that time it's all just smoldering. The captain walks up and says, man, I'm really sorry, Gary, about your car. I knew I had to act at that moment. Yes, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> but inside, I was happy. It's like, wow. I mean, wow. I mean, it really burned up. I mean, it really burned up. I just really couldn't hardly con- conceive of that, you know? I called the insurance guy the next day, and they, they paid it off. Or they offered me a price, and I read the policy. And I said, in small print, I saw this. It says, if it burns by fire, there's no deductible. I called him back, and I said, uh, you missed something. <laughs> no deductible. He goes, I hear the keypad. You know, you're right. I'm sorry I missed that. $500 more. Anyway, so he paid the van off, paid the bill, overnighted the check to the attorney on time, and then, you know, paid some other bills. We were ecstatic until we sat there that night realizing we don't have a car. (laughs) My dad heard of this, and he called me, and he said, let's go look for a van. My dad's a very generous person. I thought possibly he might buy us one. So we went and looked, and he said, I'll give you $5,000 towards the down payment. You pay the rest. I'll co-sign for you. He knew, the, he knew my credit was bad. I'll co-sign for you. And I thought, that's pretty fair, isn't it? I mean, that's, five, that's pretty, pretty good deal. In front of my dad, I didn't want to, I didn't know what to do in front of my dad. He was being very generous, so I went ahead and filled the form out. I didn't know, I was kind of torn up on the inside, because we just made a decision not to use debt like that. Of course, they called and it was approved. Come pick your van up in the morning. So Drenda and I that night, thank God for wives. I mean, I was already torn up. She said, Gary, you know we can't do that. So I called the guy and canceled the, the van. When we did that, we had to take our stand. Took our stand. A guy called Drenda that she had met several months before because her parents sold antiques 
He called her and said, you know, I run this nursing home. We have three rooms of furniture that we have, we have to get rid of. Do you know, are you interested in looking at any of it? Her parents sold furniture, did antiques in Georgia. She calls them. We shipped it down there. They sold it, and they gave us, bought us a station wagon. I was in a car that was paid for. So I was now getting a picture of how the kingdom operates. Well, that was quite the story, especially at the beginning of understanding kingdom. We kind of shook our heads and God teach us how this thing operates. You know, interesting, God provided a car for us and then we began to save money. And within a year, we actually saved enough money to pay cash for the car we really wanted to buy. That's right. And it was the beginning of a journey with the kingdom that changed everything. Yes, it was. You know, faith with patience is how we inherit the mm -hmm. kingdom, that's what the Bible says. But typically we want to do credit card with begging God to help us pay it off. Yeah, and God's saying, no, be patient and let me show you by faith do it. what's in the kingdom, how to get it out of the kingdom. Yep. And when we did that, it, it did, it set our, us on a different course. When people go into different debt for course. a house and a car, they're set on a course to stay in debt the rest of their life if they don't do well, something it, different. The Bible says that when you borrow money, you become a slave to the lender. Mm -hmm. and. That's not a good place to be. I mean, there are places and times for temporary debt. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the lifestyle of living in debt by debt. And that's what God had to teach us. There's another whole way of operating, another whole kingdom that operates. And that story was exciting, but the stories that followed that story got more exciting and more exciting and they happened more yes. frequently. And our lives literally changed and we were excited about it. So today we're talking about where do I start? How do I get started in this process of getting out of debt? And we're going to take a look at some information that will help you. I'll be right back with that answer. We have been wanting to get out of debt. You know, that's the biggest thing. We've been praying about it for a long time. And then, um, you know, we've been coming to conferences. And uh, this is when we heard about the financial freedom. We took the, the course and, uh, you know, did the little booklet. You know, look, how can you save here, save there? And it was just those little fragments, just, you know, the things that you don't think really mean anything. You know, the $20 here, the $50 there. And I felt like when we, once we leaned into that we're gonna do it, all of a sudden, man, things started happening. You know, we hear the stories, even uh, Pastor Gary and Drenda, there's stories of, you know, looking for change. <laughs> We've been there. Yeah. The pain of that. I remember one evening, you were in the garage. I was and peeling copper, selling copper was, to try to He had to an some old bills. construction cord and he was, I was like, what are you doing? And it was taking him <laughs> forever and he's stripping. He was like, we need some money. I, I need this copper Gotta out of this it. old cord. And, you know, just those moments were so painful, you know. Hearing Pastor Gary talk about, you know, the little fragments and look around, what can you sell? What can you sell? We don't have nothing to sell. What do we have? We don't have anything. Well, we had this land in the back that was landlocked, so. We could only sell it to one person, basically, the neighbor. We, we went back and forth and it, it wasn't feasible for us to sell it at the time with the price that he wanted. And I was kind of almost begging him to take it just to help, you know, ease some of the credit uh, pain. So anyway, we forgot about it. We sowed a seed. We, God gave us the plan. Next thing you know, he comes back and offers us double. And we were like, you know, I, I couldn't show all my excitement. I kind of held it in a little bit. I said, oh, let me think about it. Anyway, long story short, we closed the deal. We we was we're selling a portion of our, of our land. We still have, you know, a little bit of land left in uh, our house. I think once you just lean into it, you make that decision to, to declare you're going to get out of debt, God begins to open doors. They said it was like five to seven years. We said, I looked at her and I said, we're going to be out of debt in one year. And um, this year, we were out of debt. You know, we, we paid our house off, we paid our truck yeah. off, we helped our kids with college. And when, like I said, when I looked at her and I said, we will be out of debt in one year, I felt faith, I felt belief, I felt confident, like we could do this, you know? And we did it. When you're used to uh, thinking like the world thinks, that world system on trying to work and get money and so you can you know do what you need to do to get out of debt and all these things it never works but just following the principles of what we've learned here at faith life 
God gave us a plan and it was just, it was like an easy lean into and just following the guidelines of the plans of what God had for us. And uh, he did it for us. I think when we came home and we pulled into the house, knowing that it's our home now, debt free, you know, that no one could take it, it's ours. We were just so grateful. You know, we we gathered our, our adult children, you know, they're in college. We got them, we got together and we just prayed and just thanked the Lord for for what he's done for us, you know, and that this really is um, living a good life. And he has it for everybody. And we're, we're just truly blessed and just happy, you know, living that happy life, you know, the good life. Now we could build wealth, you know, before it was just pay bills. You know, now it's like, okay, now. Now, what did God have for us? We're not bound to anything. You know, we have that freedom to go forward and, and see what the Lord has for us to, uh, you know, for his kingdom. And to now to be able to say we're debt free, it just feels so good. And we know others, other people can obtain that too. This is the why behind what we do. We remember what it was like to be financially in a difficult place, to struggle, to not know where our next paycheck was gonna come from and what we were gonna do. But we've put together all of the tools we feel like you will need to be able to get started and finish, to finally get out of debt. It's an awesome feeling. God wants you to have that freedom in your life so you can do what he's called you to do and you can fund his kingdom instead of letting the enemy steal from yours. Gary, let's get started. How do we start this process oh, yeah. to get out of debt? All right, there's two sides of getting out of debt. We have the, the spiritual, the kingdom side, and the natural side. Now, we just mentioned the kingdom side, and certainly we need to study that as well. But today, let's focus on the natural side. We got to do our part. The first step in getting out of debt is knowing how much you owe. It's that simple. It's amazing how many people put their bills in a drawer, especially when money's tight. They don't want to look at them. Sure. And they just compile in there and build up sure. in there. And if I ask them, how much do you owe? They couldn't answer. Most of the time, they buy things based on, can I afford the payment? It's just right. one more payment, adding the payments, but That's they right. really have no clue what they really owe. And they don't count loans to, to Uncle Joe, 0% interest or different things. They don't count that as a debt. I wanna know everything you owe. So here's your first assignment. Go to the bill drawer, be brave, and <laughs> dump it on the floor. Every scrap piece of paper, anyone you owe, a student loan, a dentist, you know, braces, your parents, whoever, I want you to make a list of everyone you owe and come up with a number. Don't let the number scare you because we're going to get rid of the number, but you've got to face the facts to know what you're going to believe God for. That's number one. Hmm. All okay. right. What's next? Number two is I'm going to ask you to make a budget. Now, I know it's not a pretty picture, so don't get embarrassed by that. And you're probably negative. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for exactly how much are you negative. You know, interesting, Drenda, when you ask people if they have a sound budget, they usually can't answer the credit card has done away with the budget, meaning that when people are shopping, they don't stop shopping when they're out of money. They keep shopping because they have credit cards. They don't, they don't really even know the end of their budget. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They don't even know I have $200 as to spare. As long as there's spare. room left on the credit card. As long as they, they just keep going along and then they keep racking up debt. So here's your assignment. Do not make a pretty budget. In other words, I'm not asking you to think, okay, we can live on this, 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 and make a budget. I want you to go back three months and account for all the money you've spent. I wanna know how much you were negative the last three months, not going forward. We're trying to find a number, and that is how negative is your budget? And it's gonna shock you. You may think, well, I'm $100. You may find you're $800, but that's the point. We gotta find out, and we've gotta stop that negative slide. Hmm, good, what's next then? Okay, cash reserve. You probably don't have one. You may have a few hundred dollars, but that's the point. We've got to have one. I want you to list how much you have. If you have a hundred dollars, write it down. All right, so we have to do two things right now, Drenda. Above anything else, we have to balance your budget first, cash reserve second. Those two things have to be done before we ever think about getting out of debt. We have to balance the budget to avoid sliding into further debt. We have to have a cash reserve to stop us from having to use debt to fix small emergencies like a set of tires or whatever we need. 
at least $2,000, preferably $5,000 in a cash reserve. And you may be thinking, I, that's huge. I don't have that money. I'm going to suggest they might. We're going to show you how to find that and get it done. All right, so now we have to find money. So we're going to assume your budget's negative and you have no cash reserve. A pretty typical situation in America, I think, probably. Well, actually, statistically, 50% of Americans are not even making their minimum payment on their credit cards. Mm, wow. 50% wow. can barely make that. So they're borrowing that minimum payment. They're going further in debt every month. So we it's have a negative spiral. We have a, it's, it's, it's a bad situation in America. People live on debt. Okay, so now we got to find money. How can we find money to get you up to speed? So here's your next assignment. I want you to go through all the things you buy and what can you get rid of. I'm talking about things that cost you monthly, like a cable satellite bill, a health club membership, um, some kind of program that you're paying monthly on it. You're going to have to help me here. You've got to think of ways to cut expenses, all right? They can get creative ways to save money that are huge. That's right. These are non-essential things that you can creatively think of cutting back to free money up into your budget. Now, I know people are thinking, well, we don't want to live that way. Well, it's temporary. freedom yes. is worth it, so please yes, bear with it. us. Okay, the second way to find money is to sell something. All right, most people, if you go to their garage, they have garage sales and things, Go to the garage or the basement, you're going to find a bunch of stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, we need to hold either garage sales, eBay, Craigslist. The bottom line is we've got to find the cash reserve by selling things if we can. And then we, got, we need to also find other things we can sell, like maybe the second car, motorcycle, boat, RV, things that are not essential to your life that you can sell that will eliminate a payment. So again, we're all about trying to find money at this point. Just right. trying to find money. What can I sell? What can and I list? It's not that you can't have those things. No. You need to have them when you're out of debt. <laughs> That's right. We have a saying, when we were getting out of debt, we had a saying that says they... Yes, they still make it. Still make them. You can still get it. And them. it's a lot... You'll enjoy it a lot more when it is cash and, and you're you not pay strapped. for it. Yeah, not strapped and you are enjoying it, then life is a whole different right. way of living and that's awesome. And yes, Drenda, in our experience, the average person can yeah. be out of debt in five to seven years, including their mortgage, yes. without changing their income. That is an amazing statement to make, but let us prove it to you. And that's what we want to do here on Fixing the Money Thing. That's right. You know, Gary, through the years you've been helping people with their finances, over 30 years, how, I guess, what is the biggest amount you've seen someone be able to save in a month that thought they were strapped and going to lose everything? What was the biggest well, I don't know amount about of money how much to save in a month? I mean, I, the largest I saw a guy with two hundred and thirty thousand dollars in credit card balance, just credit wow. card balance. Wow! You know, pay all that all off. I mean, obviously, there's been great stories, but typically this process takes more than just one month. You know, we have to walk it out over a few months to get everything right. working. But I know we found people that were strapped that thought they had no extra money, and we oh, found a thousand dollars a month extra. Oh yeah, well, the extra. average. Okay, I see what you're asking. The average when we try to find money and we'll go through our process, the average is five hundred to about thirteen hundred dollars a month in people's cash flow when we finish financial restructuring and actually get things rearranged. And these are people that thought, no, Gary, I have no extra money. Right. I'm negative every month. Yep. But you found five hundred to thirteen hundred dollars. Yep. yep. Almost without exception, we so, find that every time, and that's what we looking. use to get out of debt. Definitely. So, Definitely. Anyway, jump on, get involved, go to GaryXeat.com and get on board. Yes. It's an awesome, yes. awesome thing There's to do. There's more than hope. There's a plan to get it done. That's right. We're going to show you how you can get it done. That's right. Let's take a look at how to get this information right now.